Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about prayers, and this time we'll be talking about a prayer called the Litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This is a prayer that's been around for a long time, having been approved by the Pope all the way back in 1587. This is going to be a pretty long one, because this is a prayer which is mainly centered on Mary, and it's a long prayer, as it involves reciting many of the titles of the Blessed Mother. There are a ton of these, each with their own meaning, so we might as well get to it. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. These three lines request the mercy of God in all three persons of the Trinity. The word Lord is meant to imply the Father in the first line and the Holy Spirit in the third. Jesus is referred to by his title, Christ, which means Messiah on the second line. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. We ask for Jesus to hear our prayer, and to hear it not just casually or with disapproval, but graciously with the willingness to listen. God the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Ghost, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. All three persons of the Trinity are specifically referred to by name here, as well as the Trinity as a whole. Also, this section acknowledges that Jesus redeemed the world. By the world, this doesn't mean the physical world, but rather mankind. Holy Mary, pray for us. Holy Mother of God, pray for us. We begin to get into the titles of Mary, starting with the most obvious one, Mother of God, which we covered in episode 175. After each title, the words, Pray for us, are repeated. Holy Virgin of Virgins, pray for us. Mary is pure virgin, more so than any other, because in addition to abstaining from sex, she also abstained from sin. Mother of Christ, pray for us. Mother of Divine Grace, pray for us. Mother of Christ is self-explanatory, and the phrase divine grace clearly refers to Jesus and the graces which he brought into the world. Mother most pure, pray for us. Mother most chaste, pray for us. Mother inviolate, pray for us. Mother undefiled, pray for us. There is no ambiguity on this point. The Blessed Mother is pure in every sense. Mother most amiable, pray for us. Mother most admirable, pray for us. No mother could be more amiable or more worthy of admiration than the mother of Jesus. Mother of good counsel, pray for us. Being the queen of heaven, Mary is perfect and therefore always gives good advice to others. Mother of our creator, pray for us. Mother of our savior, pray for us. Here, Jesus is referred to as both creator and savior, which he is. Virgin most prudent, pray for us. Prudence is the first of the seven virtues, which we went over back in episode 42, and like all virtues, Mary excels in it. Virgin most venerable, pray for us. Mary is worthy of great respect because of her wisdom and character, among other things. Virgin most renowned, pray for us. Virgin most powerful, pray for us. Virgin most merciful, pray for us. Virgin most faithful, pray for us. Mary is more famous, more powerful, more faithful to God, and more merciful than any other virgin or any other mother could ever be. Mirror of justice, pray for us. A mirror reflects objects put in front of it, and the more spotless the mirror, the clearer the reflection. Because of Mary's spotlessness and the fact that she didn't sin, she reflects the justice of God spotlessly. Seed of wisdom, pray for us. This has multiple meanings. It refers to Mary's throne in heaven, which descends to her through the kingship of Jesus, who is all wisdom. This throne also comes through the same bloodline as Solomon, who had great wisdom as well. It also refers to Mary holding the child Jesus on her lap, and therefore being herself the seat who wisdom sat on. Cause of our joy, pray for us. Spiritual vessel, pray for us. Mary is the cause of our joy because she chose to accept the responsibility of bringing up the Son of God, and the term spiritual vessel refers to the beauty of her spirit. She contains a wonderful, virtuous spirit. Vessel of honor, pray for us. Singular vessel of devotion, pray for us. 
As Mary is the vessel of a most virtuous soul, she is also the vessel of great honor and devotion to our Lord. She is more committed to him than anyone outside of the Trinity, and honors that commitment with firm determination. Mystical Rose, pray for us. One term for those who receive revelations from God is mystic, and in this sense Mary is certainly mystical. As for being a rose, a rose is a thing of incredible beauty, surrounded by sharp and painful thorns, just as Mary had a beautiful soul, but was surrounded by wickedness and suffering. Tower of David, pray for us. The Tower of David was an actual fortress, fortified by King Hezekiah to protect those who took refuge inside, in case Judea should be invaded by Sennacherib. In the same way, Mary protects those who take refuge in her. Tower of Ivory, pray for us. The term Tower of Ivory is intended to be an expression of the great beauty of Mary, in the same way the term is used in the Song of Songs, chapter 7, verse 4. House of Gold, pray for us. Ark of the Covenant, pray for us. Both of these titles refer to similar traits in Mary. The Ark of the Covenant was built as a place for God to dwell while he traveled with the people of Israel in the wilderness, and large sections of it were made of pure gold in order to avoid all impurity in the vessel of God. Still, God wasn't physically inside the Ark because at the time he didn't have a physical body. Mary held the physical body of God inside of her for nine months, being his house for that time, and was far more pure than any gold. Gate of Heaven, pray for us. When we die, we will almost certainly need someone to help us reach heaven, and the Blessed Mother will be there to help us if we're willing to ask for her help. She is, in this sense, a gate of mercy to help sinners reach our Lord. Morning Star, pray for us. Once again, this is a reference to the Song of Songs, though this time it's chapter 6, verse 9, which the Church interprets as a description of Mary, the Heavenly Queen. Health of the Sick, pray for us. Refuge of Sinners, pray for us. Comforter of the Afflicted, pray for us. This refers to the duties that Mary performed in comforting the sick and dying, and which she still performs. She was there for Joachim and Anne, her parents, when they died, for her husband Joseph on his deathbed, and most painfully of all, for her only son, when he spoke to her from the cross before breathing his last. The term, refuge of sinners, again refers to her protectiveness for those who repent and turn to her for mercy. Help of Christians, pray for us. Mary is there to help those who believe in her Son and who appeal to her. Queen of Angels, pray for us. Queen of Patriarchs, pray for us. Queen of Prophets, pray for us. Queen of Apostles, pray for us. Queen of Martyrs, pray for us. Queen of Confessors, pray for us. Queen of Virgins, pray for us. Queen of All Saints, pray for us. Since Mary is the Queen of Heaven, she's also Queen of all those who dwell there. Martyrs, Prophets, Patriarchs, Angels, in fact all the Saints. Queen conceived without original sin, pray for us. Unlike other human beings, Mary wasn't conceived in sin. This is a complex doctrine, however, and should be dealt with in its own section, rather than as part of this one. I'll come back to this. Queen assumed into heaven, pray for us. Enoch and Elijah in the Old Testament were assumed into heaven, body and soul, and neither of them was the mother of God. It only makes sense that Mary would also receive this great honor. Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, pray for us. Queen of Peace, pray for us. The Rosary, which we'll get to later, is definitely centered around Mary, and as Queen, she is definitely an advocate of peace, and Queen of the ultimate place of peace, Heaven, which is presided over by Peace himself, God. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. This prayer, once again, is directed at God, and once again it's a request for God to listen to us and show mercy on us. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Once again we address Mary, asking her not for any specific gift or benefit, but rather that we be made worthy of the gifts that are promised by Jesus. Being worthy of good things is a lot harder than getting them. Grant, we beseech thee, O Lord God, that we thy servants may enjoy perpetual health of mind and body. 
Again, we're addressing God, offering to serve him, and asking for good physical and mental health. And by the glorious intercession of the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, be delivered from present sorrow and enjoy eternal happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, the prayer admits that Mary is ever virgin, always a virgin, no matter what, and asks God for her to act on our behalf, to help keep us from sorrow, so that we can enter heaven, to enjoy eternal happiness there with God, the only place where it can be had. It also touches on how, in the end, all of these things are done through Jesus. Next time, is there a prayer intended specifically to ask for Mary's help and protection? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.